And now, in the name of sweet charity, she is going to dance for you. The romance of the Orient, the spice of Paris, and the pep of Manhattan. All of these you will see and more when Geraldine dances. One of my bid, ladies and gentlemen, to see the fan dance. The famous one and only fan dance. One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars is bid. One hundred dollars is bid. <clears throat> Can you imagine, Mother Eve, when the leaves begin to fall? Who will make it two hundred? Two hundred! Two hundred dollars. In the name of sweet charity, I thank you. Two hundred dollars is bid! Two hundred dollars! Uh, Two hundred dollars to see Lady Godiva with her hair bobbed. Do I hear more? That sword girl is just wild enough to do a fan down. Do I hear more? Five hundred dollars! Five hundred is bid! Do I hear any more? Yes, the sweet charity, my dear. Five hundred once? Five hundred twice. Are you ready, Geraldine? Five hundred for the third and last time. All right, boys, the band then. What's the matter, sister? Going to a fire? Oh, pardon me, ma'am. I didn't know. You just follow me. Thanks, officer. Yes, ma'am.
Hey, brother, do you mind telling me what she said to you back there? Well, if you must know, she told me she had a part of her nose so bad she could hardly wait. Oh, and she's old enough to dress herself. Geraldine, come in. You might have waited until I was finished with Annette. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. Well, where's the fire? You sound just like that motorcycle cop. Speeding again, eh? You better watch out. One of these days we'll get a ticket. Not as long as my powder puff holds out. Hi, arrest Putin. Excuse me, please. Gustav is the name. I beg your pardon. You are welcome. What's that, black tapioca? Black tapioca? That is not caviar. No, not it's not tapioca. You crazy people. This when is the fish eggs tapioca. I'll make sure. What is it? Still tapioca. Say, so listen, are you crazy or am I stupid? I will prove to you by myself. That is not caviar. Tapioca. Caviar. Tapioca. Hey, does it stand here on this can, please? Caviar. Does it stand here anything about the tapioca? No. So you see, tapioca and caviar don't mix. The ones you had might have been caviar, but mine were black tapioca. <laughs> I will give you the final improvement now. So I don't get caviar and you don't get takiwoka. We split it. So. Josh, you're right. Thanks for the caviar. Du Schmalzgesicht, jetzt hast du mir doch meinen ganzen Kaviar aufgefressen. What's the matter? What's the matter? Now I got to spread all the caviar before they come. Who's coming? Who is coming? Who isn't coming into this house? This is not a home, this is a hotel. Fool me the people, always fool me the people. It's just what Lincoln said, of the people, for the people, and by the people. You said it, old man. <coughs> this is Miss Traraldine. You better go and see right away what she wants, please. Yes? You should have heard Gary's value. It was priceless. <laughs> is he really that good? Good? Your boyfriend acted as though he really belonged to a sideshow. <laughs> you talk as though he were a freak. Well, use your own judgment, darling. Come in. Oh, I won't need the car anymore today, William. Yes, miss. Uh, but don't leave. Some people may drop in for cocktails. That'll be all. Yes, miss. Jerry, you shouldn't sit there like that with a man in the room. Man? Why, he's only the chauffeur. Hello, William. Is Miss Carroll at home? Yes, Mr. Weatherby. Hello, Gary. Hello, my dear. I'm so sorry I couldn't be at the bazaar this afternoon. My dear, you don't know what you missed. What am I around here, anyway? Chauffeur or a butler? How many guesses? What are you talking about? You asked me a riddle. How many guesses? None. And I won't play. Come on, big boy, shake it up. They're dying of thirst tonight. Tell them to make themselves at home. We'll be right in. Tapioca. Younger, younger, younger. You got five hundred dollars from that old tight one. Oh, it's impossible. Well, that's what he paid. See, Jerry, do a fan dance. Jerry Weatherby, do you mean to say that you let Jerry do a fan dance? Oh, but my dear, it wasn't my idea. Well, nevertheless, you shouldn't it... let her do it. My sister doing a fan dance. 
Well, now, don't get excited, dear. It was perfectly all right. Hi, Jerry. Oh, hello, Terry. Geraldine, did you do a fan dance? Why, of course. Why not? But I think it's dreadful. It wasn't dreadful at all. As a matter of fact, it was very good, wasn't it, Gary? Yes, it was. <laughs> you know, you should be in the theater. <laughs> Gary, I don't want you to put those ridiculously wild ideas into her head. Gary, you go to what I just heard. What's this Lola? Can you imagine that screwy thing doing a fan dance? For charity. Ah, uh, what do they know about charity? Hundreds of families would be glad for a ten-cent loaf of bread. Here they are eating caviar at $11 a pound. $19.50 a pound. Ah, oh, what's the deal? You know, they're always sending out checks for charity. So what? Are they really trying to help somebody out? Nah, just an excuse for her to do a fan dance. You know, I shake a pretty wicked fan myself. But I don't do it for charity. Wer weiß? Vielleicht hat sie einen guten Fan. <laughs> Gustav, you've been picking. Ich? Ich möchte mir das verbiegen haben, ja? Good afternoon, Mr. Kendall. Good afternoon, Lynette. Miss Carolyn? She's in the living room, sir. Oh. Hello, Mr. Kendall. Hello. Hello, Mr. Weatherby. Hello, Mr. Kendall. I'm sorry to break in like this, but I must talk to you. It's very important. Oh, will you pardon us? Why, certainly. I was just thinking of going anyway. <laughs> yes, uh, goodbye. Uh, I'll phone you later. Goodbye. Have you seen the evening paper? Why, no. Why? Read this. Good. Let me see that. Well, here it is. Don't you have some new pictures taken? This one is dreadful. Don't you think so, Mr. Kendall? Here. Yeah. This is what I wanted you to see. Why, how perfectly ghastly. Why, we saw him only last week. He seems an excellent spirit. Well, whatever made him do a thing like that? It's not a pleasant story. Fletcher speculated with money that didn't belong to him. When the investigation started, he took the only way out. Well, I can hardly believe it. And he was such a good friend of father. Mm, that's just it. You know, your father entrusted him with all your affairs. Poor Mrs. Fletcher. I'm not thinking of Mrs. Fletcher. It's you I'm worried about. Your bank account has been wiped out. Everything you own has been sold. Even mortgage your automobile. Isn't there anything left? Well, of course, the examination was rather hasty. Take a little time to straighten things out. Yes, I know, but what are we supposed to do in the meantime? Well, your rent here is paid until the first of the year. By that time, I hope to have better news for you. If I can be of any assistance, you know where to call me. Thanks very much. Keep your chin up, sis. We've still got a roof over our heads. But our rent is paid up till the first of the year. Yes, but what are we going to do for food? Did you ring, Miss? Yes. Tell Williams and the cook to come in here. Yes, ma'am. Well, what are we going to do? The first thing to do is let the servants go. I want to tell you that your work has been very satisfactory. 
But unfortunately, we have to let you go. You mean we are gefired? We are decamped? Not exactly. We'd love to keep you, but we've lost our money. You mean I work for nothing? I won't get paid? Yes. Then I resign. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry this had to happen. Of course, if you want references, we'll be only too happy to give them to you. That's fine. But how about my last month's salary? Your last month's salary? Yes, I went to Mr. Fletcher. He was busy and said I'd get it all this month. Well, how much do we owe you? $100 for last month, $100 for this, $200. Well, we just can't pay you. We haven't any money. Oh, look here. I haven't paid my room rent in weeks. I can't go back there without any money. But what do you expect us to do? Ask you to live here? Not a bad idea. How much do you pay for your room? Ten dollars a week. And we owe you two hundred dollars? Okay. You can have the guest room for twenty weeks. Thank you. I'll move right in. And how about you? Me? I'll take 16 weeks. Have you gone crazy? Are you actually going to let them live here? Certainly. Why not? We get a couple of swell servants for nothing. They want their breakfast. Sit down. You're not working here any longer. You're a paying guest. I beg your pardon, Mr. Williams. Quite all right, Miss Bay. More coffee, Mr. Williams. Please. Thank you. I hope you'll overlook the disturbance. Neighbors, children, don't you know? Mischievous little darlings, aren't they? Quite. Oh, nuts. Now, don't be so impatient. Well, why doesn't she answer? Maybe the bell's out of order. Annette! Annette! Now, do act like a child. Stop shouting. Oh, where is she? Well, let's go and find out. I'll tell her a few things when I see her. Now, Geraldine, don't lose your temper. Got enough in the house for dinner? No. Well, you better get some. What would you like? Oh, I don't know. I'll leave that to you. But get enough for four. Annette, did you hear the buzzer? Yes, sir. Well, why didn't you answer it? You know we're waiting for breakfast. Well, it was, uh... You seem to forget. We're not working here any longer. Yes. We're paying guests. Oh, I beg your pardon. Breakfast will be ready every morning at 8. You're welcome to it. But if you want it, you'll have to come and get it. You know, sis, we've been talking about going on a diet. Don't you think this is a good time to start? Yes, but I want my breakfast first.
you beat that? A guy looking for a job in a Rolls Royce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, but we've got more chauffeurs than we can play. Well, that's all right. I'll take anything. Okay. What's your name? Tom Williams. Eight. Thirty. Address? Manhattan Towers, Park Avenue. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Education? Graduate engineer, construction. I think I've got a job for you, but it won't pay much. Well, that's all right. I'll take it. Off clerk with construction gang. Can you handle it? Sure. When do I start? Tomorrow morning. Train leaves at 10.30. Train? Yeah. Job in Philadelphia. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't take it. What's the matter? Married? No. Oh, dependent, huh? Yeah, dependent. All right. Taxi lady? Come on, Phineas. We'll take that one. visiting here. Well, what would you like to see? The aquarium? Statue of Liberty? No. I'm homesick for grass and trees and horses. Yes, ma'am. Listen, Mug. If you don't want any trouble, keep this hack out of here. This is my spot. Yeah? You got another one on your shirt, huh? Mm -hmm. What place is this? It's a dude ranch, Ma. Who owns it? Why, nobody. This is Central Park. Hmm. Just what I've been hankering for ever since I left Nevada. Grass. And trees. And horses, Ma. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, Ma. You see, just before Phineas was born, I was reading Little Lord Fauntleroy. And he ain't got over it yet. What's your name, son? Tom Williams. <laughs> My name's Jones. Annie Jones. Back home, the folks call me Pancake Annie. Oh, Ma. It ain't nothing to be ashamed of. I make the best pancakes west of the Mississippi. That is, uh, I used to before I made my money. <laughs> well, tickle me with cactus. What sort of duds are those? It's a riding habit, Ma. I've seen men shot for lead. <laughs> it's the style. All the best people dress like that when they ride. Is he society? Oh, yes. You see the smart set right here. Now that you've seen him, are you happy, son? Oh, no, Ma. I want to meet him. That's what we come to New York for, ain't it? He'll never stop pestering me until he does. I'd give a thousand dollars to have him mingle with them folks. You mean you'd really give a thousand dollars just to have him meet society? Yeah. Hmm. If I ever catch him in one of them, they're right in habit. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Any luck? Not bad. Mmm, liver and onions. Smells good. Be ready in a second. Say, uh, they have any breakfast? Yeah. Caviar and champagne. How about lunch? Caviar and champagne. Is that all they've had? Well, we'll set 
afternoon they got kind of hungry. So they had caviar, caviar and champagne. champagne. <laughs> Let's see, 65 and a dollar 14. That makes a dollar 79. Can't eat at the Ritz on that. Yes, we can. There's bound to be somebody there we know who pay the bill. Let's see. We'll have the uh, avocado canopy and uh, mountain trout. I don't want any fish. All right, no fish. We'll have squab in wine sauce, artichoke hollandaise, hothouse strawberry, and a demi -tip. Is that enough? Perfect. But supposing we don't meet anyone we know? There you go, spoiling my whole dinner. Let him come and get it. You'd marry Gary when he asked you, we wouldn't be worrying about dinner. If I marry him now, people say it was for his money. A lot of stars. Well, that's just what we're doing. I wonder what happens before you starve to death. Well, I once read that just before you lose your mind completely, you have the most realistic dreams about good things to eat. Carol, mm. it's happening. What? I smell food. Me too. Smells like onions. Liver and onions. What a dream. Jerry, it's no dream. How do you know? Because if I ever dream of food, it won't be liver and onions. Hey, you're not a bad cook. Oh, I have other accomplishments. Hello. Hello. I beg your pardon. I hope we're not disturbing you. Not at all. Have some liver and onions? I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Help yourself. You'll have to pardon the informality. We had to let the servants go. What a coincidence. So did we. Oh, uh, you have some potatoes? Thank you. Say, I ran across something today that might interest you. Really? How'd you like to make a thousand dollars? How? A woman who's visiting New York engaged me as a sort of guide. She's here with her only son and a lot of money. And she'll pay $1,000 to have the boy meet the right people. I never heard of such a thing. Well, it is a little unusual, but then so is Annie. Annie? Yes, her name is Mrs. Annie Jones, but out west her friends call her Pancake Annie. Well, are you suggesting that we introduce her to our friend? Mrs. Van Dyke, I want you to meet up with my old friend, Pancake Annie. They're really very nice people. I don't care how nice they are. I'm really amazed at you for even suggesting such a thing. I'm sorry. I simply thought you might be able to use the money. I don't care to hear any more about it. Come, Geraldine. Oh, haven't you forgotten something? Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, thank you for the dinner. Never mind that. These dishes have got to be washed, you know. <sighs> You're not suggesting that we wash them. Why not? You've eaten, haven't you? Might as well get this thing straightened out. I'll buy the food and Annette will cook it. You'll simply have to do your part. All your life you've been living on the fat of the land, but that's all over now. If you want to eat, you've got to work. Of course, you don't have to wash the dishes if you don't want to. Then you don't have to eat, either. Well, That's my last notice. But I've got some good reviews from the Junior League shows, if you care to see them. Yes, I know, but this is the middle of the season, and all the shows are cast. Well, isn't there anything at all? Nightclubs, vaudeville? Did you ever do a vaudeville act? No. But I've simply got to have a job. I don't care what it is. Okay, sister. Go down and see uh, Joe Thomas. He's always looking out for new talent. And here's the address. Just tell him Al Kingston sent you. And here, show him this. Oh, 
Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Pardon me, is Mr. Thomas in? Yeah, you find him over there. Make me laugh. What do you do, Irish, Dutch? No, I take bumps. Not for my money. Well, listen, I'm terrific. I can take a bump like nobody. When I take a fall, it looks like I broke my neck. Here, lady, hold this. You watch this. Not bad. Hey, Sam. Yeah? Get that guy's name. I can use him. He's good. You mean he was good. Hey, Dutch. Well? Uh, Mr. Kingston sent me. Yeah? What do you do? I think. Okay, let's hear it. I haven't any music with me. Well, that's all right. You name it and Louie will play it. Do you know Manhattan Love Song? Not bad, sister. Now let's take a look at your games. Your leg. Come on, step back and show them to us. Come on. Higher, higher. Come on, let's see him. Higher, higher. Let's take a look at him. Not bad. Any experience? Oh, yes, sir. Say, lady, this is the scandal's burlesque. That fan dance business may be all right for Park Avenue, but it's old stuff down here. I'll show you the kind of stuff we want. Hey, Daisy! Yeah? Hang up your hat. All right. Okay, Louie. Leave the old 
open spaces, start going places, do a hot show instead of hey, hey. Grab yourself a locker and knickerbocker and just hang up your hat on Broadway. Lose your country habit, don't be a babbit, start awaken, you're taking the nap. Leave the tuna trolley, a folly dolly, we'll make scenery on any map. That's what we want. The more clothes you take off, the more they applaud. And the more they applaud, the more you take off. I pay $35 a week. How about it? No, thanks. I couldn't do that. Okay, sister. If you ever change your mind, drop in, I'll give you a job. Thanks. What's the matter, Joe? You saw for the dame? Don't be a sucker. It isn't her. It's the name. That society bunkers are great. Come on, for the yokels. Well, job all right, but I didn't take it. Why not? It was awful. Did some bird make a pass at you? It was worse than that. I never realized people could be so filthy. Well, what was it? Let's not talk about it, please. What's the matter with you? Too risky to do a little work around here? What's gotten into her? You have no right to talk to her that way. She's been out looking for a job all day. I'm sorry I spoke that way. Will you forgive me? I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, really, I didn't. Blow. <laughs> Thanks. Now, let's start all over again. I'm sorry. That's not what you said at first. Oh, isn't it? No. You said, I'm sorry I spoke that way. Will you forgive me? Well, then why didn't you answer me? I don't know. I wasn't angry with you anyway. Well, what were you crying for? Until today, I never realized how rotten people could be. Look at them down there. Running around, shoving, pushing, 
crowding each other like a bunch of insects. Yes, you're right. They do look like that from up here. But if you get down there, you'll find out they're just normal human beings, working, creating homes. What if they do crowd each other a little? They're struggling for their very existence, and it's not so easy. You've never understood that before, because you've always looked at life from up here. I never thought of it that way before. It looks a little different now. That's the spirit. Hey, if you want dinner, you better come in and give me a hand. How are you feeling, Geraldine? There's nothing wrong with her that money won't cure. You're right. That's all we do need is money. Yes, but how are we going to get it? You ever see that pancake person you were telling us about? Sure, I've been driving her around every day. Would she still pay to meet the right people? Geraldine, are you serious? Well, certainly. We can't go on like this any longer. We need money. How do we manage? I don't know. But I do know that tomorrow I'm driving her over to the riding academy in the park. Hmm. That's a right smart looking horse. But what's that on top of it? Reggie Vandergriff. Gee, real society. I'll say so. They've got so much class, they wouldn't even eat pig's feet unless they had spats on. Hmm. You know everybody, don't you? Not exactly. They visit the people I work for. I mean, well, this isn't my car. I thought it was. No, someone put that for hire sign on it as a joke, and I carried it through because, well, I sort of needed the money. William! Yes, miss? What's the meaning of this? You told me the car was out of order. It was, Miss Carroll. Well, then what are you doing here? Well, you see, I, uh... It ain't his fault, Miss. I'm to blame. Maybe you better let me explain. Take my horse to the stable. Yes, Miss. Uh, you see, um, my taxi broke down, so I hailed your car, and your boy said he couldn't take me no further than this. That's how it happened. Ain't it, Phineas? Yes, Ma. Um... Oh, excuse me. This is my boy, Phineas. How oh, do you do? How do you do? I'm Annie Jones. Back home, they call me Pancake Annie. Pancake Annie? I've heard that name before. Yeah, when Ma came to New York, they put a picture in the paper. Oh, yes, of course. That's it. You're the woman who started with a pancake and ended with a silver mine. Oh, shucks. It wasn't nothing. <laughs> I just grub staked a few of the boys. Well, I'm glad to know you. I'm Carol Stewart. How do you do? Mark 6500. Hello. Hello, Jerry. You better have everything ready. Well, I don't know, but she's talking with Miss Carroll now. Oh, good. I'll take care of everything at this end. Annette, it's working. Let's go. What's the rush? Well, they'll be here soon. I'll make the sandwiches while you change. And what part do I play in this? The maid, of course. Nobody said anything to me about it. Can't you see how important this is? Mm. Not to me, it ain't. As far as I'm concerned, you can include me out. And you can trim my hat with sagebrush if that ain't the gospel truth. <laughs> Those toys of yours are positively delicious. I simply must hear more of them. <laughs> Won't you come and have tea with me? Now that's real nice of you. Ain't it, Phineas? Yes, Ma. Home, William. Yes, miss. And pray. I'm the aid maid. Where's Annette? On gay arts maid. <laughs> A French maid. Oui, oui, ma. Shall I serve tea, Miss Carol? Why, yes, please. You know, Phineas, 
I always did want to see one of these here outhouses. Penthouse, Ma. Come, Mrs. Jones, please. the idea? Where's Annette? She's in her room. She got temperamental. Oh, so you're the maid? Yes. And I'm the chauffeur? Yes. In the best families, the chauffeur always kisses the maid. I have the electric company. Where's the meter? Right over there. What's the idea? You won't need this anymore. I'm going to shut off the juice. Well, you can't do that. Well, why don't you pay your bills? Well, uh, there must be some mistake. Hey, look, I'll pay it myself. How much is it? Well, you'll have to take that up to the collection department. I'm only service. They're waiting for tea. Well, you go in and stall. I'll think of something. But whatever you do, don't let them touch the lights. Imagine they use electricity to light cigarettes. Why, we even cook by electricity. Must be right handy having all those modern improvements. <laughs> Have you got a match? I did want to use that. Oh, why didn't you? ex man There's Ona Uzje. What? Uye isn't they a pay the old bay. Oh, oh, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Ute eight lay. The Uzje is uh, off. Hmm. You savvy that Parlevu just like a native. Yeah, just like a native. I beg your pardon. I didn't know you were receiving, my dear. Uh, uh, come in, my dear. Uh, Mrs. Jones, I want you to meet Miss uh, Faye. She's the, uh, uh, my house guest. How do you do, Mrs. Jones? This is indeed a pleasure. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. I beg your pardon. This is my son, Phineas. Oh, charmed, I'm sure. Yes, ma'am. Geraldine, a cigarette. Oh, that's it. Williams, the bell is out of order. Uh, yes, sir, I'll see to it, sir. Is Miss uh, Carol at home? Well, uh, uh, yes, sir, she's in the living room. Why, Jerry, what's this? How do you do, Mr. Weatherby? Don't say anything, I'm the maid. Hello, Gary. Oh, hello. Uh, Mrs. Jones, this is Mr. Weatherby. Mrs. Jones. And uh, Mr. Jones? How do you do? How do you do? And Miss Faye. Miss Faye. <laughs> haven't I met you somewhere before? Oh, I'm sure you haven't. And Miss Faye just returned from Europe. That's it. I never forget a face. Doville. No. Uh, uh, Sam Sebastian? No, no. Uh, 
Uh, now, don't tell me. <laughs> I never forget a face. Uh, Annette, we... Uh, Annette, that's it. Now I know where I met you. It was Laupheim. No. Oh, now, wait. Uh, uh, wait, just give me a minute. I'll uh, concentrate. Annette, will you show Mr. Jones the view? Uh, with pleasure. Phineas, go with Miss Faye. Yes, Ma. I'm sure I've met that young lady somewhere. Williams, what the devil are you doing? Preparing tea, sir. Preparing tea? Oh, certainly, Gary. Haven't you ever had tea? Well, uh, I really don't know. Uh, with all these here modern improvements, I never thought you'd boil water over an open fire like we do out on the range. Thank you. You see, Gary, uh, Mrs. Jones is from the West, and we're having tea Western fashion in her honor. Now, that's what I call downright sweet of you, trying to make me feel at home. And Phineas thought New York people were so uppity. <laughs> Life is such a bore. Just a continual round of parties, banquets, and balls. Yes, ma'am. I'm so tired of it all. Oh, how I long for the wholesome life of the great open spaces. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you're such a comfort. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Jones. We really shouldn't be out here alone. People will talk. Yes, ma'am. Call me Net. Yes, ma'am. Net. William, I think tea is ready. Yes, miss. You're just in time for tea. Oh, splendid. I feel just like a dish of tea. Carol, dear, how can you tolerate such a careless servant? Oh, shucks, that's nothing. <laughs> that's liable to happen to anybody. Oh, don't worry. William's going to have tea ready in no time. Oh, don't go to no bother on my account. <laughs> Do it in your usual way. Oh, I insist. Uh, it's no bother at all. Carol, dear, why don't you let Mrs. Jones have her own way? I have an idea. We'll compromise. That's all go to the wrist. Well, if you insist. Oh, are you uh, coming, my dear? No, no, you'll have to excuse me. I, I have a headache. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. Uh, well. Thanks for a lovely time. I'll call you real soon. Yes, do. Phew. Now I have got a headache. You're not the only one. Well, we certainly made a mess of things. You mean you'd have? Garrett hasn't telephoned me in ten days. That's nothing. I've lost my only cash customer. And that's nothing. Look at me having to play a maid. Who can that be? I'll answer it. And you better hide. Maybe it's Mrs. Jones. Here's a letter for you. What is that? My dear Carol, I enjoyed my visit immensely. You must come and be our guest sometime. Devotedly. And next, P.S. I almost forgot. Phineas and I are getting married. Circle 74745. I'm going to call Mrs. Jones before it's too late. 
She's too nice to have this happen. Hello? Mrs. Annie Jones. What? Are you sure? Well, didn't she leave any forwarding address? All right. Too late, she's gone. Poor Mrs. Jones. Poor Phineas. Poor us. There goes our thousand dollars. Well, we're not any worse off than we were before we started. I can't make any money sitting here. I guess I'll take the car out. Do you want dinner when you get back? Sure, why not? What would you have? Caviar and champagne. You'll get liver and onion. I'll take it. I suppose now you're going to start dining his sock. No, no, I'm going to keep him back, but so he can't walk out on me. Are you hinting that Gary walked out on me? You haven't seen him lately, have you? Well, maybe he's ill. That's it, I bet he is ill. That's too bad. Don't you think you ought to go see him? That's a good idea, I will. I hope he is sick, for your sake. Hey, Gil, that slug's back again. Oh, yeah? Well, watch me. Go get him, kid. I'm with you. Hey, you. I thought I told you to stay away from here. This is a public hack stand, isn't it? Not for you, it ain't. Well, I'm staying right here till somebody moves me. Oh, yeah? Well, here's where you move. onions and now you won't be able to eat it. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll take more than a bump on the head to spoil his appetite. He's as strong as a horse. Get her out of here, Doc, before I really do get sick. Okay, young man. I'll see you tomorrow. Telegram, Miss Stewart. Oh, thanks. How do you feel? All right. Are you sure? Certainly. What's the matter? Listen. Gary feels fine. Stop. Wouldn't take no for an answer. Stop. Leaving on honeymoon. Stop. We'll be back in a few days. Stop. Love, Carol. Now, how do you feel? Terrible. Get out of that bed. I don't feel so good myself. Showing remarkable improvement for only five days. He had nothing to do with it. Why don't you tell it after you were all the proper nursing? Yeah. I had to get well in self-defense. Mm-hmm. When he grouches like that, it means he's hungry. Would you excuse me, please? Hey, Doc. How soon before I can get out of here? Oh, you're coming along nicely. Better play safe and take it easy a little while longer.
Six, seven hundred. Scandal burlesque? Mr. Thomas, please. Oh, hello, Mr. Thomas. This is Geraldine Stewart. Uh, I've been thinking it over, and if that job is still open, I'll take it. Okay. Come right down, and we'll rehearse you. Sure. You can go on tonight. What's that? Sure, I'll let you take a couple of bucks. After the show. Yeah. Sam. <clears throat> Sam. It's that society dame. I want you to go out front and make a great big sign. Put it up on top. Extra added special attraction. Hello, William. Hello, William. Welcome Hello. home, Miss Ca... I'm mean, Mrs. Weatherby. <laughs> May I offer my congratulations? Thank you, William. Thank you, Arlene. Oh, she went out. Said she'd be a little late. <clears throat> well, uh, <clears throat> is there anything else? No, no, that's all. Oh, uh, Williams. Yes, sir? Mrs. Weatherby has told me everything that has happened, and we both appreciate all you've done. Thank you. Uh, you, of course, will get your back salary, and uh, beginning tomorrow, uh, your salary will be raised, $25 a month. Well, considering everything, don't you think it would be better if I were to leave? Nonsense. Well, we'll just forget everything and uh, you'll go back to your old position. Well, I'll think it over. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, what time does Miss Geraldine leave? Three o'clock. I wonder where she can be. I don't know, but I bet wherever she is, she's the life of the party. <laughs> <laughs> the meaning of this. Ain't you ever been presented at court, dearie? Yeah, it's quick to call him, baby. You pull me in so many times, people think we're going together. Okay, be right down. Is that Jerry? Yes. Well, where is she? In jail. Well, good heavens, what for? I don't know, but whatever it is, she did it. Now, this is no time for joking. Now, don't get excited, dear. Come on, Williams, we'll go down and get her out. I'll go with you. You stay here. Yes, dear. But what is she in for? Fifty days. Unless you want to pay fifty dollars. Uh, pay the clerk. Yes, sir. Oh, Gary, you don't know how glad I am to see you. And this is certainly a fine welcome home you've given us. Oh, now, don't start scolding. If you have no regard for your own reputation, please have some consideration for your sister and myself. Now, now, you listen to me, Garrett Weatherby. Just because you're married to my sister, there's no sign you can tell me what to do. Mr. Weatherby's right. There's no excuse for this sort of thing. And you keep out of this. Of all the people in the world, you should be the last one to say anything. And if it hadn't been for I you... I beg your pardon, Miss Stewart. I forgot myself. It won't happen again. Say, hey, lady. What is it, officer? Oh. I beg your pardon. Never mind. Sister, you can send it back. Come in, children. <laughs> the newlyweds. Well, congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy. They're just like a couple of lovebirds, ain't you? Yes, yes. Ma. Well, uh, won't you come inside? We just dropped in to say goodbye. Well, uh, when are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. Did you have a nice honeymoon? Oh, yes, it was grand. Did you go too? Sure. I always did want to see Niagara Falls, but it's no good without a honeymoon. So I just tagged along. <laughs> yes? Well, Mr. Weatherby is driving Miss Geraldine home. He'll be here in a few moments. Uh, I'd like to say goodbye to Tom. 
Do you mind? Why, why, no. Go right ahead. Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. You leaving? Yes. Where are you going? I don't know. Anywhere to get away from here. Tom, you were never cut out to be a chauffeur. I'll give you a real job. Why don't you come out west with me? I'm sorry, but I can't. What is it? A girl? No. You got any money? I'll get by. I owe you a thousand dollars. No, I can't take it. Why? Well, I can't tell you. Is it on account of Annette? Oh, no, 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 of course not. <laughs> Listen, son, you don't have to lie. I was a biscuit shooter myself for 20 years, and I spotted her for a pop rustler the minute I laid eyes on her. <laughs> I knew it all the time. She's a good girl, and she'll make Phineas a good wife when I get through with her. Well, if she's ever half as good as you are, that'll be plenty. Oh, shucks. The train leaves tomorrow morning at 10. Will you be there? You bet I will. You won't be sorry, son. Well, I guess we'll have to be running along. Come, children. All right, Phineas. Uh, on behalf of, uh, uh, on behalf of my my wife and myself, I want to thank you for for bringing us together and and, and all you have done for us. If you ever, if you ever come to Nevada, you must visit us. We'd love to have you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'd love to. Yes. Where's Tom Williams? He's in his room. Good. Well, of all the screwy looking outfits. Annette? Yes, Mom. Uh, come, children. Goodbye, Miss Carroll. Goodbye, Mrs. Jones. So nice to see you. Because I felt like it. Don't talk to me that way. I won't have it. No? Well, now you listen to me. You were beginning to be a real human being, but just as soon as a few dollars came back into the family, you went right back to what you were, an 18-carat pain in the neck. Well, I wouldn't take it from you if you were the last woman in the world. I'm through. I'm quitting. Oh, here. Blow. Where are you going? Well, if you must know, Nevada. Annie Jones is giving me a real job. Well, do you suppose she could use a maid, too? Why? Well, even in Nevada, the chauffeur always kisses the maid. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> 